Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're going to finish our no short legendary Iron Man run. We're trying to beat the game on the highest difficulty without uh, shooting a single shot, using any explosives, no heavy weapons and nothing alike. It is time for the final victory lap and I couldn't be more excited about it. Let's do this, but if we're doing it, let's do it kind of the right way. We gotta move up, just put everybody in position, so to speak. Okay, I'll go. Ed Kelly no Paul moves over point. here. We're still requiring a few more rounds until all of the cooldowns ah, are on. being uh, fully reloaded. I, I... And then we should be fine. Hogbite might want to move over here. And Sonar Terminal. moves well, over there. Fantastic. Good. Reloading. Not that it really matters because we're not using any weapons. Anyways, at the beginning we really have our time to get all of uh, the cooldowns back. Good. So what are we looking at? One more turn. Okay. Good. As I was saying, it has been a long run and I want to finish it on a high note. So the way to do it is to potentially move in and start getting some allies right away. So we're not going to start uh, simply by uh, engaging in like attacking all three of them instead what i would want to get out of this here are two archons that are going to work for us in the future time for our domination archons are just such incredible things also they do have their melee attack which is totally fine for this run and blazing pinions i think since it's a natural ability would not be considered a weapon so yeah. That should work as well. Your persistence is admirable, but tired. It is time to accept the path laid out before you, Commander. Return Good. We're you moving in, like I mentioned. Good old domination. See, that's the advantage if you really have maxed out psi operators. You start this encounter, not only did they each immediately kill one of uh, the enemies, nope, they even made it a full ally right off the get-go good we're charging in let's try to hurt him and let's try to hurt him really bad burning is a fantastic start Hmm, that's potentially a bit far away. Let's see, can we somehow see this guy? I'm on the move. So this is as far as we can move forward. Now, nah, Comet Protocol wouldn't be able to reach him. I really don't want to use my dimensional rift on him. That almost would be a bit wasteful. So the one thing that we can do, although it kind of opens up the second half of the map is we're Icarus jumping. That's exactly why we had that suit in the first place. And let's continue to hit him. All right, 
I think since he has quite a bit of armor, what we actually can do is we can follow up and uh, use the katanas. So that's a lot of damage. And I think that with advanced teamwork, we should be just about ready to take him on. Ooh, barely not enough. We want to risk another teamwork. You know what, why not? It's going to kill him right away and or almost kill him right away. Not the perfect start, but with burning he will essentially die. Although he ha does have regeneration, I wonder if that kicks in prior or after him uh, taking the burning damage. Yeah, again, still don't want to waste um, my AoE damage. Instead, we're moving the commander into a strategic position up here. Same for Sonar. And let's see what kind of enemies we're getting. Three codices, well that's not too bad. I mean, they can teleport in, but yeah, realistically speaking, not a problem. There's the attempt to mind control. Of course, we're going to be immune. So that joke's really on you, buddy. And a couple of snakes. Fantastic. First one already saw the, the Viper suit and decides to panic. Yeah, hilarious. Okay, cool. Um, one thing at a time. And another. We're starting killing this guy very soon. The um, next avatar should be able to spawn. We can continue killing these guys over there. Let's move a little bit further. Okay, before we're going in, let's think this one through. Again, we got some Reaper abilities. Might as well use them in order to clean up. So that's the first kill. Nailed him. Eight to ten. That's not a uh, not an insured kill. Dimension Rift, by the way, would be a fantastic ability to soften these guys up. Unfortunately, too far away. Our living mimic beacons are moving to the enemies. In terms of dealing with the dealing uh, with the codices, I do have an idea. We're just spreading out, double move all the way over to here. I would inspire sonar. The enemy should fear us. That means we can finally use capacitator discharge. 
I want to make a statement and kill the enemies right away when they're entering. Almost. I've seen that I can reach both of uh, these. Okay, cool. Also causes disorientation, which is perfect. Now, moving up. Time to deal with the both of them. Check it before you get too close. And I pretty much know that there will be a pack over here, right? The question is, how are we going to deal with that guy? I think you're melting. All right. Let's deal with the Vipers first. The one codex. Not sure how we want to deal with him. Alright, Hogbite definitely is not taking shit from anyone. Potentially move into here because there could be a spawn. And that's the end of all of the Vipers. Moving all the way into the middle where the spawn theoretically happens. If it so happens. If it happens here, even better. Commander will take care of that. And yeah, let's stand up here. And end the turn. Like I mentioned. Not a surprise that we're seeing uh, the the second avatar spawn right over there. Could have positioned ourselves here. I still have Sonic Bomb. <laughs> and three mutants, okay. Good. Let's uh, deal with them, shall we? All right, so... They are in tough spot. I still wouldn't want to attack them in melee.
So I guess what we're going to do here is we're moving out. Void Rift. And that'll take care of two of them. Fantastic. Target's neutralized. The next uh, spawn will most likely happen here with third avatar. Tank is going to do exactly what the tank is supposed to do. Good. What are we going to do with Roby? I mean, he could move up here. <clears throat> and the problem that I'm seeing is he would be taking damage. We've already used our ability shift. Let's maybe give Roby an aid protocol. That way he's going to be less likely a target for them. And this here may or may not be wasted. Void Rift, can we reach the guy back there? Unfortunately not. Well, we could combat protocol. Not a bad idea. Essentially, Sealing off that entire area back there. Common Protocol forces him to move. Alright, fantastic. That's not bad. It's actually a pretty decent position. We can charge here. That'll give him more than full cover. So he will be pretty much left alone. Ooh. Barely out of reach. We could hit him with a Void Rift. and someone no hmm we could try to inspire but no one is really close enough Roby's too far away hmm I think, to be honest, the Void Rift might be a decent choice. At least it deals some damage. It can shred it as well. And proc some other effects like Rupture. Yeah, the other effects didn't work out. Ah, <laughs> it resisted mind control. Hilarious.
Of course, now Inspire would be exactly the right choice. Unfortunately, we don't have it left over. Shall we just kill this guy? Nah, I'll wait. Uh, the X is valuable. Are we going to waste a mind control cooldown? You know what we're going to do? We're going to position, reposition Hogbite. He does have a bonus uh, focus there. So we're just going to kill this guy. He kind of retakes the focus. And I'm more or less all inning on the idea that they are going to spawn up there. Easy enough, so far we didn't even need a mimic beacon. Oh. Interesting pack. It's going to be a normal shot. Damn it, find some cover. Can't take much more of that. Oh wow, well, that's a pretty decent shot. Another attempt to mind control. And another failure. These guys are going to focus on our uh, Archon, and that's okay. They will take a lot of damage in return. Not the right, uh, not the right time to be here full of mutants, buddy. Unfortunately, they are spawning on the exact opposite side of the map. I've covered one half of the map entirely, and they continue to spawn on the other side. Hilarious. All right, let's patch you up real quick. Although I think he can even get his health back by himself, right? Nothing is happening on this side of the map. But before we're going to move anyone, I would like to deal with the avatar. That's kind of the most important enemy at this point. Let's start this. Good, we can be efficient here. Stasis against the Codex, mainly because it starts to annoy me. And Nullens to take out the Avatar. There we go. Oh, it's two down. Nullens does not regain hit points. He would be able to regain hit points, but I don't want to take any chances here. Go. 
good. I'm pretty sure that they will spawn soon. In the meantime, since we seem to have so much trouble on the other side, let's move this Archon over. Next round we're going to see a spawn right here and I want to welcome them with Double Blade Storm. Good, let's put a Mimic Beacon over there mainly so that they are running and clustering up. That'll give us a nice opportunity to Hit them the next time. Moving up. Yeah, overall interesting combat positioning. Normally, uh, you wouldn't want to just stand at a single location, right? You would. Um, you would want to like cluster up and not be all over the place like we are but it so happens uh, to work out quite well and we're even having pretty much a lot of spare DPS no one got like severely hurt so far there we go that's what I was talking about Potentially two attacks uh, with Bladestorm. Fantastic. Starts with already half hit points. <laughs> okay. Well, that was fun. Good. The one Archon here seems to tank the entirety of uh, the enemy team. Which in itself is hilarious if you think about it. Lots and lots and lots of mutants. Meanwhile these Archons here seem to actually dislike the Mimic Beacon. That's fine. That's only one unchecked Archon. And that's probably Blazing Pinions. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Who would have guessed? Yeah, the mutants seem to be a bit confused about this situation and are just forfeiting. Well, too bad for them. The Archon is still tanking the enemies. Hilarious. Okay, cool. Good. We got an avatar down here. Avatar versus Avatar Nullens is the only acceptable way to do that duel. Eight points of damage is a bit meager. But okay. Alright, I see how it is. is it clear? Even more null lancing is required. You can't run from my power. <laughs> Eats a second null lance. This time for 13. Fantastic. I would be hard pressed to see how this is not going to be GG. And what other way to end a campaign than to give Hogbite the honor of finishing it 
he sprints across the entire map and then slashes the dirty face of uh, the avatar. And there we go, guys. That's pretty much it. That is the end of the No Shot campaign. I am thrilled. It was a fun challenge. I thank you really for bringing it up in the XCOM 2 subreddit. And uh, thank you for staying with me. It took quite a uh, time to uh, pull it off. We needed to farm out that one chosen, uh, the hunter that was melee immune. The dynamic of the game changes quite a bit if you only have uh, melee uh, units. And I hope if this campaign showed anything, then it is probably that even if you are forced to make plays and go in, um, you're oftentimes not really op uh, ending in the open. So if you watch closely specifically f uh, for the uh, initial engagements, I try to stay in cover as often as possible. And the specialists really pulled their weight because uh, they healed um, a lot of the kind of scrappy engagements at the beginning. So whenever I hear that it is unlikely to, to pull off a campaign and that it is uh, difficult, then I'm often thinking, well, are you really upgrading your armor and do you have enough healing? Because if both of it would be true, the game is actually quite forgiving. So in this case, even so much so that we didn't need a lot of uh, shots. Personal highlight for the entire uh, campaign uh, was probably uh, pro many of uh, the fights that we had at the mid, uh, early mid game, where we had a lot of engagements where it was very, very close to even engage. Uh, sometimes we needed to fall back just to get a better position. So that was uh, interesting and in really challenging. The game definitely was also fun in the end game. Uh, if this campaign showed anything, then uh, probably that you can use Psy operatives and just melee attacks to uh, go th uh, through it. But I also learned uh, quite a few things. For instance, one of the learnings uh, was that uh, if you use the Psy operative power fuse, that uh, it actually counts as if the enemy would have thrown their grenades, so they are susceptible to blade storm, which is fun. I didn't know that uh, particular interaction. So Fortress Templars plus Fuse are a real combination because you do not only get the explosion, but you get a blade storm attack on top if the guy stands next to the target. So it's a neat little combo if you ever end up with that. So it was probably the learning out of it. As always, uh, besides me thanking you for the loyal viewership, I would be interested to see or hear what you want to see as the next run. I got a couple of um, Saving Your Disaster campaigns uh, that uh, would interest me. Uh, those usually run well, but they are more kind of short, uh, short term uh, distraction and not a full fledged campaign. So. Um, please leave in the comments uh, down below or on Reddit uh, what you want to see next. I'm open for suggestions as always. And uh, if you do come up with a great idea, I will implement uh, it and do another challenge run. And in the meantime, uh, there might be a chance that I will return back to Long War of the Chosen. I know that some viewers had a very strong uh, desire to uh, yeah, continue that part of the campaign. And I gave my word that we're, uh, that we're at least giving it a couple more uh, missions. Anyways, that's the end of the No Short Run. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I sincerely did. And I hope I see you in one of the next Let's Plays. Take care and bye-bye.